It's a beautiful day. Lucky that we live Hawaii. 24-7, 365. Swimming in the ocean anytime. Take the leap. Aloha kako and welcome. I am Laurelyn Salamanca of the Women, Infants, and Children Program of the Department of Health. Each month, the Hawaii Department of Health invites you and your friends, family, and community to join us as we discuss public health programs, initiatives, issues, and public health concerns. In this episode, we will talk about recycling as part of a healthy lifestyle, the role of the department to promote recycling, and introduce you to Deputy Director Gary Gill, who will share his background and vision for recycling in Hawaii. Thank you for joining us, Gary. Thanks for having me. I'd like to start with just um, asking you to share a little bit about yourself and how mm -hmm. you became the deputy director. Well, that's a long story. I'll try and make it <laughs> short. Uh, obviously, yeah, I'm born and raised in Hawaii. My family's been involved in public policy and politics for a long time. Uh, so uh, I gravitated to a life of public service. I was elected to the Honolulu City Council uh, when I was 26 years old and uh, served there uh, for two terms, serving uh, as the chair of the city council. So uh, during my time with the city, uh, the city deals with so many of these sort of bricks and mortar everyday challenges. Uh, they have to run the landfill, they have to collect the garbage, they have to pave the streets and fill the potholes. So uh, from that time, I became an early advocate in public policy for recycling programs. Uh, we created a recycling coordinator for uh, the city and county. Uh, I was involved in doing that back in the 80s. Uh, we uh, had to open the landfill and uh, fund H power. And so dealing with solid waste, dealing with the garbage that we create on a small island like this is a huge challenge on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I, I began confronting these issues as for public policy uh, during my time with the city. Uh, of course, growing up, I came from a family where we just recycled. That's just what we did. Um, my, my mother and my father grew up in the Depression and the tough years, uh, you know, where you didn't waste anything. And uh, you, every pot and pan was recycled for the war effort during World War II. So they never outgrew that. We, we grew up uh, composting our orange peels and banana peels and recycling all our newspapers and cardboard and tin cans and things. So uh, for me, it's been a way of life growing up. And uh, in politics and in public policy, it's been one of the main things I've always been interested, focusing on, and trying to develop public programs to accommodate and move forward with greater recycling in the state. Well, it sounds like professionally and personally, it's just, it's a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's an important fit for everyone. We've seen a lot of change over the years. Uh, I, th I think in my experience, most people in Hawaii have always wanted to recycle, uh, although the pressures of our modern life are to buy something and then throw it out and then buy another thing and throw it out and uh, we've sort of been uh, in, in my generation growing up in a disposable society uh, mm -hmm. where business intends for you to just throw out what they sold you so they can sell you a new one uh, and it's that's not sustainable uh, it's not even wise it's not economic uh, it's bad public policy and so I think for the past 20, 30 years, we've really seen a growth in understanding from the public, uh, especially in Hawaii, that we need to do better at recycling. Oh, are there any specific um, roles that you look forward to in this position? Well, uh, the good thing about being here in the Department of Health is that uh, we can help set those broad policies statewide. We have to have a really close working relationship with each of the counties. Uh, the county governments really do most of the work. Uh, we in the Department of Health do uh, the policy and the regulation. Uh, we can help make things happen, but the real uh, work where the rubber hits the road is in the communities and in the county governments. So it's exciting to be in the center of it uh, and uh, to work with uh, each county now has a, a very well-developed recycling program that we can help promote and support. Great. Well, how well um, is the state as a whole doing with recycling? Well, we're doing a lot better than we used to, but <laughs> we're not where we need to be. Uh, back in the 1990s, the legislature set a very aggressive goal 
Uh, the state of Hawaii should recycle half of all of our trash. That is hard to achieve, but we've been making good progress. Uh, the goal in the law remains half of the waste should be recycled by the year 20, 2000, basically, by 13 years ago. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and and we haven't uh, we haven't met that goal. We're at about 35 percent of our waste stream being recycled or uh, di diverted from uh, landfills. Uh, we've seen dramatic increases in programs. What used to be just newspaper and cardboard and aluminum cans uh, has expanded to glass. Uh, uh, we are taking green waste, uh, which is in Hawaii a huge part of our waste stream, just the yard trimmings, uh, tree trimmings, uh, is a, almost a third of all the trash that was being put in the landfill. There's no reason to put that in the landfill. That should be diverted and composted. So we're seeing composting operations in, in all the states, uh, in all the counties in the state. Uh, we, of course, um, uh, introduced as we'll be talking about later an advanced disposal fee on glass containers and we did the high five beverage container recycling program you get your nickel back when you recycle your your bottle or for your drink bottle uh, uh, that has been hugely successful billions of bottles and cans that were just thrown away uh, crushed or landfilled are now recycled shipped out of state to be turned into new products uh, and now we're looking at electronic waste. So we have a, a long way to go. It, it, the, the, the easy stuff has been done, right? Uh, the, the curbside collection is making it easy for people. Uh, it's more difficult to uh, uh, actually pay for the kind of recycling uh, in public areas, in, in, you know, a separate recycling can in public parks, for example, or schools and these things. Uh, all are logistically difficult. They take time and effort and, and money to make it work. Uh, but we're getting there bit by bit. Uh, and I have every confidence that we will reach our 50% goal. We haven't made it by the deadline that the legislature set, but we're going to get there step by step. Well, that's good that, to hear that there's all this progress. Mm -hmm. And of all these various priorities, what would you say are the top three? The top three priorities right now? Uh, well, my first priority right now is to expand our recycling efforts to electronic waste. Uh, E-waste uh, is should be recycled for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, in old televisions and circuit boards, there are toxic heavy metals that you really would rather not have in a landfill, which over time they could jeopardize the environment. Uh, but also, they're valuable. Uh, these things shouldn't be thrown away. We're digging up entire mountainsides to pull out metals and then just throwing them away. There's, there's more metal in our landfills than there is in the mountain. We should probably be digging up our old landfills and pulling the metal that we've just thrown out. Uh, so uh, for those reasons, because there's some toxic uh, concern and there are valuable metals uh, that, that should be recycled and turned into new computers and new radios and new stereos, uh, all of these things lead us to take that next big step towards recycling. Uh, electronic waste. Um, for, for some electric uh, products, uh, manufactured goods, uh, sometimes they last a long time. T you know, take your blender, your kitchen mixer, your toaster. Uh, those things will last a decade or more. Sometimes they'll pass from generation. You know, I, I got an old blender from my aunt. You know, it's like 19, it's older than I am, right? <laughs> uh, you know, and that's when they made them good, you know? So you, yeah. should, you, can, you can keep these things. But when it is time, to get a new one for whatever reason. Uh, there are really valuable metals in there. Copper uh, is required in the windings to make a motor. Anything that spins is going to have a good amount of copper in it. Uh, and you know, we have entrepreneurs who are going down our freeways at <laughs> night pulling the copper wires out because it's so valuable. Uh, they're stealing copper from, you know, and, and so it doesn't make sense for us just to throw this away into a landfill. All of these things uh, should, should be collected. Uh, we have a program that uh, is working a little bit. The legislature passed a law, a very, very mild program for TVs and computers and printers. Uh, but uh, we need to go beyond that. We need to kind of fix the law that's now and expand it. Uh, for a wider variety of electric products. Uh, they all have valuable metals and they should all be recycled. Right. 
Now, how do these priorities fit in with the state's, um, the health department's strategic plan, which mm -hmm. is actually the namesake for the program? Yes, <laughs> indeed. Well, uh, we in the Department of Health, as you know, we've put a lot of effort into kind of mapping out the future and categorizing the work that we do within the five foundational goals right. of the Department of Health. And one of those is uh, protecting the environment, preserving a, a clean and healthy environment, not just for the public health, because uh, certainly if, if we swim in dirty waters or we breathe dirty air, that affects our health as humans. But for the health of the environment, for the coral reefs, for the natural areas, the native plants and birds, uh, and our broader ecosystem. These are all important and fundamental parts of the Department of Health. Um, it's unusual in Hawaii that all these environmental programs are part of the Department of Health. In many states, uh, the environmental programs are a separate mm -hmm. uh, department or uh, a separate agency. Uh, it, I think it works to our favor in Hawaii that the environmental programs and the public health programs are actually intertwined. Uh, it makes for a larger and more complex department, but it also makes for better communication uh, between the different uh, parts of the department that are interrelated in real life. Everything is connected in the yeah. environment. Uh, so uh, protecting the environment is one of the foundations of our plan, and uh, basically it, it's most of what I do as a deputy uh, are the environmental programs, which are pollution prevention, um, public health through food safety uh, and the state laboratory. Uh, so all of that's tied together. It makes me a very busy person. <laughs> well, I think I, I definitely hear what you're saying about having um, the different departments housed, the you know, public health mm -hmm. and environmental health, and it just facilitates ease of communication and uh, probably just more efficient altogether. Yeah. It, it can be that way, and it usually is that way. We all have our frustrations, and mu much of the work that I do with the Environmental Protection Agency uh, on the mainland, they fund a lot of our environmental protection work uh, through federal grants, uh, and so uh, it's always a challenge, right? They have a water program and an air program and a solid waste program, so all of these things require us to really work hard to tie them together, but we've made good progress with our electronic permitting, for example. We're getting a little off topic from recycling, <laughs> but it's important that the public know. Uh, we're, we're really, uh, all, all this data is now becoming available to the public. Uh, so what we do it will be more demystified. You can see on the web uh, what the air quality and the water quality of your community is. Um, and that using that modern technology as a way of tying it, uh, all, all these different programs together. Uh, and it, it helps as well, but getting back to recycling, that modern technology of um, measuring uh, you know, the amount that's recycled, having, having uh, reporting being done electronically between the counties, uh, uh, providing you know, funding uh, to the counties um, directly for their glass programs and things, all of these are facilitated by modern technology and, and our new you know, internet-based uh, communication systems. So it, it, it's a lot easier in ways uh, to do what we need to do now than it was maybe 20 years ago. Okay. Well, thank you for expanding on those priorities and how it fits into the strategic plan. Uh, we have a video that further expands on how the department supports recycling efforts within the state. So let's take a look. The Hawaii State Department of Health Office of Solid Waste Management has a mandate to promote awareness of environmental issues and preferred waste management practices in the following order of priority. Waste reduction techniques like source reduction, which means finding ways to make products that create less waste or simply less toxic waste. Recycling and composting, where materials are diverted from disposal. And third, landfilling and incineration. The office identifies and monitors environmental and public health issues related to waste management. From materials like deposit beverage containers to used computers, the office promotes practices like recycling and composting, offers assistance, administers contracts, and runs programs to make recycling more convenient and accessible for the people of Hawaii. The Department of Health issues permits and inspects recycling and processing facilities that meet the minimum standards to ensure that wastes and the materials diverted from disposal are managed.
manage in ways that protect human health and the environment. The office has a staff of engineers and inspectors who on an annual basis monitor over 300 permitted facilities, review over 100 permit applications, investigate over 200 complaints on illegal dumping, and handle numerous informational requests. Working together with you, we aim to maximize waste reduction for the people of Hawaii. If you have any questions, please call us at Air Code 808-586-4226. Welcome back. We're here with Deputy Director Gary Gill, and uh, he's the Deputy Director for Environmental Health. Gary, wanted to find out what might be the challenges for recycling within our state. That's a great question. I think Hawaii is probably the most challenged of all the states in doing these recycling programs. One, because of our geographic isolation. We're yeah. two and a half thousand miles from anywhere else that uh, might actually utilize these recycled products. So the cost of shipping uh, recyclable material to either the mainland or to Asia is very expensive. Uh, also because our islands within the state are so separate, the, the transportation between the islands is a concern and many parts of our state are very low density. So it's easier to collect a lot of stuff at a single point in the middle of a city than it might be uh, in the countryside of Kona mm -hmm. or you know uh, Puna on the Big Island, where things are, are spread out a, a long distance, uh, the we don't have any recycling uh, industries here. What we call recycling in Hawaii is really collecting and shipping to somebody who's going to actually do the recycling. So that adds the cost as well. The cost of doing business in Paradise, uh, the availability of land for a recycling center. It requires industrially zoned property. Uh, it's very expensive. Um, so there's financial and just logistical concerns uh, that make recycling more expensive and more difficult in Hawaii than in many places in the country. Okay. Uh, there is something called a glass advanced disposal mm -hmm. fee. Want to find out a little bit more about that as well? You know, this is one of the first uh, programs that we've initiated for recycling. The state of Hawaii does used tires, and we recycle used car batteries and used oil and all number of things. Uh, many programs that didn't exist 10, 20 years ago, but glass is one of the more difficult things to recycle. It's generally of low value and it's very heavy, so dealing with it is costly and the value of it is low. So back uh, 20 years ago or so uh, when I was on the City Council, uh, we worked to create this advanced disposal fee on all glass. So any jelly jar that comes in or a pickle jar, a mayonnaise jar, uh, they pay a penny and a half per bottle or per glass container before uh, it arrives in the store. Uh, and that money is collected by the state and then 95% of it is sent to the counties for them to pay for the collection and uh, shipping of those glass containers. Uh, the glass might be crushed. We've tried for years to find local markets of where we could use crushed glass here. Some people say, oh, if you crush it up, it can be used on you know, the sand traps in golf courses, or mix it with asphalt or cement, uh, or use it as backfill material in construction. All of those things are possible, but there isn't a large enough market to make it practical uh, right now. And so uh, virtually 100% of the glass that we collect in the state is all shipped out uh, in containers to the mainland to be melted down and turned into new glass products. Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> now, the, I think the program that most folks probably know about is the High Five mm -hmm. Redemption Program. So mm -hmm. if you could tell us a little bit more about that. I'm really proud of that one. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the state of Hawaii back 10 years ago or so um, passed through the legislature uh, the High Five Program. Uh, we were the, the, we are the most recent state to do a beverage container recycling program. It had been decades since any state had uh, created one because of the opposition from the bottling companies, the mm -hmm. soda companies, the retail merchants. Uh, it, it's more work, more concern, you know, they don't, more costly, you know, all, all the reasons why uh, the industry would be opposed to it. Uh, nonetheless, the legislature took that dramatic step and created the program. 
and um, it, 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 the finances of it sometimes confuse people. So let me try and work through it really simply. Uh, every time you buy a beverage container, whether it's an aluminum can uh, or a plastic bottle uh, or a, a glass bottle, uh, there's a five cent redemption fee that you pay. And that is a nickel that you get back when you take your bottle to be recycled at a certified redemption center. There's uh, about a hundred of these centers across the state. Uh, so uh, that's the incentive, that five cent incentive is to encourage people to recycle their beverage container. In addition to that five cents, now there's a, an, a penny and a half fee. Uh, so you're actually paying right now six and a half cents. Five cents you get back, the penny and a half goes to recycle the product. So all of that money is collected by the state. Um, so to run the program, we collect a penny and a half extra, and we give that to a recycler to actually collect and ship the, the bottle out of state. But we pay them more than a penny and a half, because it costs them more than a penny and a half. Where does the extra money come from? From the people who don't collect their nickels back. Mm. Right? So you might, uh, there's about 20% uh, of the people who just still throw their bottles away or they leave them as trash on the street or you know, they, they somehow don't make it to a recycling center. So those unredeemed nickels help us run the program. And the concern that people raise uh, most recently is now that penny and a half fee, we just raised it. It was a penny and we raised it to a penny and a half. People are like, well, if this is such a great program, why does it cost more? Well, it's a victim of its own success. The higher rate of recycling, let's say 90% of the people recycle their bottles, that means I only have 10% of the nickels that, you know, to run the program. Right? So the, the higher the recycling rate, the less money is in the fund to actually pay for the recyclers. And that's why when the bill was in originally introduced and passed by the legislature, there's a threshold when the recycling rate goes up to 70%. When 70% of all the bottles are taken to a redemption center, that penny fee had to go up to a penny and a half so that we would have enough money to keep the program afloat. That's what happened. We, uh, Department of Health actually delayed raising that fee for four years because we didn't want to raise it. But <laughs> you know, at, at some point, the expenditures uh, go up and if the income goes down, you have to get more money in the fund to sustain it. Yes. So that's, that's been uh, one of the more recent controversies uh, about uh, the beverage container uh, system. Uh, but uh, it, it was all anticipated. It was all in the original law. And uh, nonetheless, you know, nobody wants to pay an additional fee. You know, it's always a controversial thing to do. Uh, but uh, the program's been remarkably successful. Uh, the, uh, e every year, almost a billion beverage containers, uh, you know, three quarters of a billion beverage containers every year are no longer thrown away, landfilled, or burnt. They are recycled. Uh, the awesome. glass is turned into new glass products. The aluminum might be turned into a window frame or a doorknob. Uh, the plastic bottles uh, turned into carpet or jackets or shoes. Uh, so it, it's been a hugely successful and popular program uh, for the public. There's f less litter on the streets. It's hard to find. Just last night, somebody had thrown a uh, water bottle, a plastic water bottle, right in front of the health department, right next to where I lock my bicycle. <laughs> okay, so I saw it and I uh, and I ran a little experiment. I said, I wonder if this beverage container is going to be there tomorrow. I just rode my bike in this morning. It's gone. Somebody picked it up <laughs> and got a nickel out of it. You know, where otherwise it might have just blown into the bushes. Uh, so it, it's an anti-litter program, it's a sustainability program, it's a pro-recycling program, and it's been remarkably successful given that we have so few resources in the state to run it. We've had our challenges, there's no doubt. There's a lot of money coming and going, there's a lot of players in the recycling industry. It's hard to keep track of a billion bottles a year, let me tell you. But uh, I think it's been a huge step forward for uh, recycling in Hawaii, and it's a good educational program as well. It, it conditions people to realize they don't just right. take that bottle and trash it. You know, there's a responsibility that you have 
to make sure that it goes into the right place and that it's reused. And so it, it constantly reinforces the recycling ethic in the minds of the people, and that's a very positive thing as well. Yeah, it's so good to hear that the, the program has been very successful. And we actually have additional video to show how well it's been doing in the state. So Great. let's take a look. The Hawaii State Beverage Container Program remains one of the department's most popular programs. Since its start in July of 2005, the Hawaii Deposit Beverage Container Law, also called the High Five Program, placed a five cent deposit to be returned to the customer when the container is redeemed and a non-refundable container fee to cover the cost of recycling the glass, plastic, aluminum, or bimetal containers. The container fee increased from one cent to one and a half cents on September 1, 2012. The statewide redemption rate, which is the ratio of the number of containers redeemed to the number sold, has increased from 67% in fiscal year 2006 to 76% for both fiscal years 2010 and 2011, and up to 77% for fiscal year 2012. The five cent redemption has also helped reduce litter at our parks and beaches and has kept billions of bottles and cans out of our garbage. There are more than 110 redemption centers statewide to refund deposits to customers who turn in their empty deposit beverage containers. To locate a redemption center near you or to find more information, visit highfivedeposit.com or call air code 808-586-4226. Well, thank you so much for this informative interview. It's been a um, pleasure. And that's all the time that we have for today. So we hope that folks out there will be recycling more and then now that they know where the money's going and how they can exactly get their five cents back. So thank you everyone for joining us again for another episode of Foundations for Healthy Generations. Ahui ho. Gotta get up. It's a beautiful day. Lucky that we live Hawaii name. 24 7, 365. Swimming in the ocean anytime.